Knowing when a coroutine is going to end is often an issue and often something you want to be able to do. And the solutions out there, well, they're not always the simplest solution. And the popular solution is kind of messy and kind of ugly. So we're going to talk about a better way to know when a coroutine finishes its work in this video. So a little backstory here. I was working with some third party code that made heavy use of coroutines. In fact, it had a series of coroutines that one coroutine called another, called another, called another. And this went five or six deep, which was messy to say the least. But to the point, I needed to know when those coroutines had finished and done their business. And I didn't have a good way to do that. I do now. The popular method, or at least in my opinion, the popular method, the most common method is to use a bool. So let me show you what that would look like. So what we've got here is a coroutine. And it's not really doing anything. It's just a stand in coroutine. And we're starting that coroutine in our start function. So the popular way, or in my opinion, the common way to know when a coroutine has finished is, is to do something like a class wide bool like this is done, is working, something like that. And then when you start the coroutine, you say is done equals false. And when you finished is done equals true, something like that. That's how a lot of people determine when a coroutine is done. And that works and that's fine if it's pretty simple. But in the situation that I was in with third party code that I didn't want to edit, and it was several coroutines, this just wasn't going to work. It just wasn't an option. I needed a better way to do it. Now, ironically, full disclosure, if I'd looked at that third party code a little more closely, I would have found the solution a few minutes faster. But the solution is still the solution and it's a good one. So what we can do instead is make use of the fact that coroutines can yield for other coroutines. And what that means is I can know when this coroutine, some coroutine is finished, if I wrap it in another coroutine. And that might sound like I'm passing the buck. I'm just passing the buck to another coroutine, but it works really well. Let me show you what I mean. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create another coroutine. And we're going to call this one starting coroutine something like that. And in here, what we're going to do is yield return. But in this case, rather than yield return null or yield return wait for seconds or some other yield statement, we're going to start the coroutine some coroutine like that. And this is going to wait for the coroutine to finish. Now, again, that might sound like I'm passing the buck, but I now know when that other coroutine is done and I can now do stuff when the coroutine is done. And that's great. That's useful. That's super helpful. But where this gets even more useful and more helpful, because here we've kind of added a lot of code and we haven't necessarily done a whole lot more than we would with the bool. But where this gets really helpful is if we have multiple coroutines that we're calling. So, Let's imagine here we have a another coroutine something like this. Uh, this one can just return null, so it's just going to wait one frame. And let's imagine that the summer coroutine we want to start that we want to complete that before we start another coroutine. Well, this is a perfect solution for that. All I have to do is come down here and start the coroutine another coroutine like that. And I know that the second coroutine isn't going to start until that first one finishes. I can keep going. Yet another coroutine. And then if I put another yield statement in here, get our autocomplete helping us here, yet another coroutine. And so this is what I mean by it being useful. I can start one coroutine. I know that coroutine finishes before I start the next coroutine. And yeah, you might be saying, hey, can I then just put it all into one coroutine? And yeah, you can. You could put this all into one coroutine, but then you end up with this big, massive coroutine, which is just not good programming uh, practice. Just like you wouldn't make one giant function, we want to break it up into individual functionality. So switching projects real quick. I want to give an example of where I've done this in my personal project. Here I'm launching a missile and there's several steps that need to happen. 
I need to instantiate that object. I need to open the silo doors. I'm going to play some particle effects. We're going to wait a little bit. Uh, we're, we're going to launch this thing and then we're going to close those doors back up. And each of those things takes a certain amount of time. And so what I've done here is the open doors is one of its one coroutine. It's its own coroutine. Um, I have this delay in here and then the closed doors is another coroutine and it's all wrapped up inside of this one do launch coroutine. So again, did I need to do it this way? No, I didn't. But I like the fact that I can kind of break up the logic of how I'm launching this into separate coroutines, call it all from one coroutine. So it's nice and readable. I can see what's going on. And I know that it's happening in the kind of these time constraints or this time order that I want it to happen. So there you go. That definitely works. But I think we can take it up in terms of level of sophistication and most likely make it work better for most general cases. So let's do that. So I've trimmed our code back down just to the single coroutine, but still with the same idea of we want to be able to know when a coroutine is finished. I'd argue what we don't, we don't really care when the coroutine is finished. What we really want to do is when that coroutine is done, we want to run some other code. And there's a great way to do that. We're going to do that with an action and we're going to pass that action into our coroutine. So to get started, just to make things a little bit easier, I'm going to add in using system at the top. And then my coroutine is going to take in an action. If you're not familiar with actions, events, and delegates, I'll put a link to my video in the top left and in the description down below. Definitely check that out. They are super useful, a little hard to wrap your head around, but they are super useful. You can basically think of them as a variable that can store a function or even a list of functions. And so what that's going to allow us to do is pass a function into our coroutine so that we can call that coroutine when the coroutine finishes. And we're going to do that by adding one line to the bottom of our coroutine, some action. We're going to check and see if it's null with a question mark. And then we're going to invoke that coroutine. So you might be saying, OK, how is that different than just, say, calling the function at the end of the coroutine? And one part of it, it's not any different, but in another part, it is different because now I can pass in whatever function I want. And so now sometimes this coroutine could call one function. Sometimes it could call another function. We could also make this we could, such that we can pass in functions from other classes. So maybe we make the coroutine public. I don't think that gets talked about all that often. You can start a coroutine on a different class. Or if you don't like that, which I don't like all that much myself, you could create some sort of wrapper function, something like start some coroutine like this and just make it a public function like that. Now you can start this coroutine from other classes. The door is wide open. You could trigger this with another event or another delegate. The door is wide open. And most importantly, what's happening here is you can pass in whatever function you want that gets called when this coroutine finishes. So future me here realizing that I should have thrown in one last example of combining these methods together. So let's take a look at what that might look like. Up at the top here, you can see I've kind of got this master or this wrapper coroutine that is uh, starting coroutines and then waiting for them to finish. And we do that twice. And then at the end, we invoke the action. And what I really like about this, what I really, really like about this method is it's neat and tidy. It's not some giant monolithic coroutines broken up into these sub coroutines, just like we would with functions. And we have really good control of when things are happening, when they're getting finished. And finally, lastly, at the end, we invoke an action so we can run some code when the entire thing is done, which was the big goal of what I was trying to talk about in this video. For me, this ticks all the boxes. It just works. It's neat. It's tidy. It does the job. I really like it. So I hope that was interesting and better yet useful for you and your project. Until next time, happy game designing. All right, first video, new house. Let's see how this goes. It might be a little rough.